Hello YouTube. Thank you for watching this far into the video. This is going to be another video where I explain how I set up the audio. The audio in this video is using the Chaos Physics Engine and uses two main events, the Break and Physics Collision events. So let's take a look on how I set this all up. So yeah, it starts off with a variable that is a geometry collection and I'm looping through. Uh, this is in order to take in any amount of geometry collections that may be living in a level. Uh, you can then target the component in the geometry collection to get access to the events that live within the geometry collection. The two I'm using are break and the physics collision information. Going down, looking at the break, this one started off simpler in order to, again, accommodate for geometry collections that live in a level that have multiple materials on them. I ended up having to set up a system that looked at a variable amount of materials, no matter if it had one or five, it would always get the correct amount of materials and look at the physical material that lives within there. I also, just for experimentation, used a map variable to sort of create a dictionary. So I then could assign an integer value to the physical materials that live within that material. I'm using that to set a value that's used later on in a parameter that targets a meta sound that allows me to then switch between material type break sounds. So this way I don't have to create a switch out here in the blueprint and I can switch within the meta sound. Now I know that might not be the best way to do things. I like to experiment and see what I can create. A couple of variables I accidentally just skipped over was the parent break in the event location. The reason that I am setting those variables there is so then when I add the audio component, I can target the parent actor so the break sound happens on the parent actor and will always be spatial that way. I'm using that location again to play that sound so that way when the sound is played it will be spatial and it will come from the location of where the break or the parent actor is. Okay moving down to the physics collision. This one is very similar to how the break starts off. I'm getting the materials, I'm getting the owner, looking, setting that owner, then I'm doing the same thing, getting the display name from the material, using the for loop with break, cycle through it to find all of them. And then if it is greater than the amount that is found, then I will break it, ending the loop, and therefore I've gotten all the materials. This time though, I am using a switch on string. I'm getting the display name from the physical material. And if it finds it, then it switches to it. So it is similar to kind of how the map works up here. I'm not using an integer value to set a switch in a meta sound. I'm simply doing it ahead of time. In my opinion, this is a better way to do it. The wise man's one said, leave your meta sounds simple all of the logic and computation ahead of time in a blueprint or in code. Okay. I've nested a lot of this into functions just for visual organization. So let's dive into this function that I've created that takes in all of these values and does things with them. Well, let's take a look at the first step in this function, 
where I am doing a lookup on the previous frame. This is what I would consider a pretty straightforward last frame lookup on a value. In this case, I'm doing it on vector information, which is the location of where the collision event last happened. I'm giving it a little bit of margin of error, just so you know, things don't always just stop playing. It gives a little wiggle room. And I'm taking the, that value, and if it is in the same location, then I don't do anything. I say it's just debug here, just so I knew that I would, if I don't hear anything that I'm like, okay, then the chunk is in the same location of this uh, collision. So yeah, moving forward into where if the collision event is not in the same location, then I begin to do some math here. The first one is uh, momentum calculation. simply multiplying the vector length to the mass of the collision and getting a value. Now that value I am using this function called weighted moving average float in order to smooth out these values because physics engines can produce some very uncontrollable values that aren't useful. So I am creating this more smoothed out value. Still, it was huge, so I have to multiply it by a very little. Then I'm looking at it, and if it is greater than a certain value, I'm setting this variable to be true or false, which will be used later on. Then I'm taking in just the mass of the object, and now if that mass of the object is greater than or less than a certain value, then I am setting a check to true or false here. This allows me to discern if a piece of the collision is bigger or smaller. Then I'm taking in the velocity, like the momentum. I'm smoothing it out again to a usable value. Okay, moving on to the wood bounce. Again, it uses a very similar physics collision value function, very much like the concrete one. A little different. I'm not looking at pieces or mass value to get large or small. I did this in order just to vary up how or in what possibilities you could use and do for creating bounces off of the data that is produced. So this one, I'm just using smooth mass output. I'm not doing a check in here. This was mostly in order, so then you'll recognize the setup. It's very much like the bounce above. I could do a little pitch shift just to try a different way to do things. I wanted to see if I could use one bounce sound and using the mass of the collision, it would increase or decrease the pitch of the bouncing sound that happens. Again, it's very similar to how the concrete ones were set up. just not using the greater than or less than checks to do things with the mass to split up big and small. I just wanted to do it on one. Again, it's using velocity and momentum to gain a wave shaper and volume. So now taking a step back and looking at this blueprint at a whole, it essentially looks at a break checks the material and checks the physical material, sets it to an integer value. The integer value then goes into a meta sound and switches. The bounces here, look at the bounce event, do the same 
check and look up on the material, physical material, switch on a switch on string, and then use those values to then play bounces. What's nice about this is this blueprint can just be placed in a level, which it is, and then can just have geometry collections added to it. And it works. It looks at every single one of these geometry collections, looks at the material, checks the physical material, and plays the necessary audio using all of these mathed values in order to make it sound good. Okay, taking a look at the next blueprint I created in order to do audio for the chaos events. I am using a single geometry collection component, binding the events to them and creating the break and the collision event. It is very similar to how I created the physics chaos audio manager. In fact, it's almost a copy of it, but with one minor change, this geometry collection component. I did this to enable better scaling for this blueprint in case there were, again, a dozen blueprints that needed this logic in it. So looking at the break event, you'll recognize the setup. It is very similar to the previous blueprint, except this time, well, like the bounces of the other blueprint, I'm using a switch on string. Bounces, and again, very similar setup. I'm also using a switch on string. And it is using a very similar function to the previous blueprint. And it is doing essentially the same thing. So the question that one should ask is why would I have a essentially duplicate blueprint doing the same thing as this other blueprint? Like I mentioned earlier, it does have a little difference. It has a single geometry collection component in the blueprint. The answer to this is essentially to make my life easier when scaling this out to multiple blueprints that will require this logic. In the long run, this probably could just be turned into a component and added to blueprints. The reason I did all this is in order to create a class system that inherits from this one blueprint. As you can see, parent class is actor. Parent class is that blueprint. All the values are here. I set it up this way in order to work with the spawning of the geometry collections in the level. This system is taken from a tutorial, which I'll share below. Just a quick look into it. It's using a status mesh component. and then a spawn actor class function, which I've exposed in order to assign these blueprints to. Simply has the event any damage, 
destroy this actor, which in this case is the static mesh, and then spawn an actor class. In this case, it is the Chaos Audio Destruction Blueprint at the location of that static mesh. So in this case, the small house, we have the assigned destruction blueprint, and then the matching static mesh. This should cover how all the audio works in this level using the chaos break event and the chaos physics collision to create audio for bounces and breaks. I very much enjoyed this process of setting this up. It is one that I definitely would say is always going to be in a work of progress because of the way that physics engines work. It's going to always require tuning and adjustment per the situation that the break or bounce event is happening. That being said, thank you very much. I appreciate everyone who's stuck around to take a look into this. And uh, yeah, look forward to sharing what I make with you all next. <laughs>